Hello, it's me, Thunderstruck, and today I'd like to talk about the toxic masculinity of Nickelodeon's All Real Monsters. Now probably some of you are thinking, how can this show have toxic masculinity? It features feminist icon Crumb. Well, let me get you started on the... Okay, that's... wow, bad timing. Uh, I appear to be getting a phone call. This is most unusual, but I guess I'll answer it live on video. Go for slime. What are you doing? What do you mean, Lance, from http colon slash slash wearesurfs.com? We were trying to have our weekly sinister meeting of the Council of Bread Tube to pay homage to the mighty neoliberator, praise imperialism, uh, but we were one vote short. Where were you, Matt, from youtube.com slash thought slime? Aw, oh, dang it, that was today? I was leading a workshop on how to use identity politics to divide the left. I guess I'm not used to having this much on my plate because I've obviously never had to work for a living. I was born rich and I never had to lift a finger. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. But I mean, you still love imperialism, don't you? Lance, I like it, I love it. I can't get enough of it. Did you pledge allegiance to the mighty Neolibrazor, the synthetic gothic hybrid super beast that uh, sustains our synthetic left agenda? Yeah, I swore the same oath you did. Oh dear God. Lance, Lance, what's happening? Are you okay? You sound like you've seen a ghost, perhaps some sort of specter haunting Europe. Worse, he's seen us. All of BreadTube should like go away and shut the hell up after I read this sentence. It's not fair. It's, it's not fair. There was time now. There was time now. Shh, calm yourself, little one. Maybe he hasn't discovered all the details of our nefarious scheme. Believe in yourself, not the working class, as I've always encouraged you to do. But I'm so afraid. Be calm. We swore an oath to uphold the liberal hegemonic order. We knew there'd be blood when we got into this. And by God, we're up to our knees in it now. Oh, okay, so he has no fucking clue what he's talking about. I'm starting to wonder if he's even literate. Hmm. You <laughs> uninitiated, let me back up and explain who this doofus is. Caleb Malpin is a crypto-fascist, posing as a leftist because it allows him to condescend to people more often. I made a video about him one time where I responded to him, responding to me, because he platformed the turf. And I was like, that's a fucked up thing to do. And he was like, ah, well, real workers don't like slime and other such utter nonsense. Highly recommend you watch that video. It's, it's wild. I think the best way to understand the difference between this individual and myself is simply to look at the name that he gave himself, Thought Slime. Working people are trying to get rid of slime. They're trying to get rid of dirt. They don't like the fact that, you know, the infrastructure of the United States is falling apart. So many countries have broken free from capitalism. And when they've done it, they haven't tried to make their countries more slimy and gross. They haven't put up paintings of abstract art and Jackson Pollock. Instead, they have built some of the most beautiful cities, some of the most beautiful subway systems, the most beautiful gardens that you've ever seen. He is perhaps most memorable to my audience for having said this. Hmm. Burger King. Hmm. Burger King. Now previously, I might not have been so willing to write Caleb off as dishonest. I might have thought, well, all of his opinions are wrong, but he's just uninformed, but ultimately sincere in his ignorance. I no longer think that. I'll give you an example of why. In his video about me, where you might remember, he said some pretty wild shit about me. He claimed I was a genocidal Malthusian because I brought up the concept of overproduction in capitalism. This is him explaining how he seems to understand the class struggle. The fact that a small handful of rich ghouls owns most of the money and will all die of starvation and exposure if we don't get some of it, even though we're producing more than we need and throwing away almost half of everything at a time when that overproduction is poised to make our planet uninhabitable, just so that the already unfathomably rich ghouls can have a computer readout that says that their wealth increased by 0.0001%, and the only way that you can get the media of your survival is by throwing yourself into perpetual and worsening exploitation forever? 
need to worry about making a living and surviving the forthcoming end of the world. While the aforementioned handful of rich ghouls don't. So according to Mr. Thought Slime, the problem with capitalism isn't that in the pursuit of profits, capitalists are organizing the economy irrationally and that even though the levels of productivity are rising, people are getting further and further into poverty, the problem with capitalism is that there's just too many resources being used. Many people in the world, uh, we all have too much stuff, uh, we're overproducing. That's called Malthusianism. And Malthusianism is an idea that Karl Marx thoroughly refuted. Mr. Thought Slime should read Theories of Surplus Value and read how Karl Marx completely refuted this ideology that there are limited resources in the world and that we're headed towards some kind of apocalypse unless we can drastically reduce the human population and get rid of useless eaters. Well, that seems like a weird thing to draw from what I said. Is it possible Caleb isn't familiar with the concept of overproduction? Let's take a look at this clip from his video, destroying bread tube with socialism, utopian and scientific. You drive the workers' wages down, you replace the worker with machines, pretty soon all these products are gonna keep being produced, but the worker is not going to have enough money to buy it. Overproduction, the built-in problem of capitalism, something that 99% of bread tube has never heard of. So Caleb, you do understand overproduction. That's great. It's weird though, it's a little weird, my dude, how when I brought up overproduction, you, you called me a Malthusian and implied that I was in favor of genocide in the third world. Some might say that's a fucked up thing to say about someone. Like if you were going to call someone, you know, a genocide apologist or, or genocidal in some way, you'd have to have evidence that they supported or made apologetic arguments for a genocide. Like, you'd have to have them on video, right, walking down the street and just casually mentioning that, you know, they, they don't really believe information about a genocide. Like, for example, hypothetically, you, what you'd need to make a claim like that is really strong evidence or, like, just someone outright saying, you know, unprompted, that they didn't believe a genocide that is very demonstrably happening is happening. Caleb, okay, what I'm trying to say is in order for you to make a claim like that and just really, really hone in on what I'm saying here is this is all hypothetical, but if, if you are going to make a claim like that. There are a lot of forces that are talking about what's going on with the Uyghurs in China. And a lot of what they're saying can't be confirmed. Dig a little bit deeper. Uh, the only source is some think tank or some institute or some policy source that's linked to Saudi Arabia. We're seeing a lot of personal accounts from people. People are saying, well, I was here, I saw this, and they're all over Western media making their claim. And if you look a little deeper, these are people that are just anti-China activists uh, that have an ax to grind. Anyway, this video is not just another video dunking on Caleb. This video is about dunking on Caleb for his video. Destroying bread tube with the Communist Manifesto. In the Communist Manifesto, there is a very brief explanation of, of what socialism is. And I am going to read it to you, and we are going to talk about this, because there's so much confusion about what socialism is. You know, I've also heard people say communism is when the government does it, right? If the government's involved, that's communism. Ah, wrong. Every country in the world has a government. Every government taxes people. Every government, you know, has a post office or that carries out at least some basic functions. One of the most annoying tendencies for scholars and lefties alike is to engage in retroactively assigning political affiliations to historical figures to fit their own narrative. How many times have you heard somebody try to say that Jesus was the first socialist or that Gandhi was essentially the combined philosophies of the Buddha and Lenin or that Napoleon was the first Bernie bro? No one's ever said that. No, people have said it. Anyway, socialism is a theory that hadn't been discovered at the time of the historical occurrence of Jesus of Nazareth. But it feels good to anoint someone, pun intended, with such a claim because it helps associate someone you see favorably with your own personal philosophy. The same could be said about Karl Hussein Marx, the big kahuna, the chief inter-gage officer of Marxism. Take it from me, one of the five or six people who's actually read Capital, that guy's views were complicated. And he wrote a lot over his lifetime. When Marx was awake, he was writing. 
His works have inspired millions of people to follow in his footsteps from a variety of backgrounds and academic traditions, some of whom may bring their own baggage to interpreting his work. And just like Jesus, some people will try to pick and choose which parts they believe and which parts they ignore. Or in Caleb's case, which parts they willfully misinterpret and which parts they never understood enough to willfully misinterpret. Take, for example, this point. This is just like two sentences from the Communist Manifesto, and this blows away BreadTube. All of BreadTube should, like, go away and shut the hell up after I read this sentence. All right. As we have seen, the first step in the revolution by the working class is to raise the proletariat to the position of the ruling class to win the battle for democracy. And then the next sentence, the important part, the proletariat will use its political supremacy to wrest by degree all capital from the bourgeoisie and centralize all instruments of production in the hands of the state. Here Marx is arguing that this is the first step in a communist revolution, to centralize all power in the hands of the state, which he is careful to note, means the proletariat as the ruling class. Not the end goal, not the essence of communism itself, like you seem to be implying here. <laughs> you clown. You absolute simpleton. Mm -hmm. Have you even read the Communist Manifesto? No, obviously not, Lance. As an anarchist, I can't read Marx or Lenin or any theory whatsoever lest my worldview crumble before mine eyes. Here's the thing. Marx and Engels didn't even stand by that passage. Later editions of the Manifesto have a preface that he wrote after the fall of the Paris Commune, which he saw as history's first instance of the dictatorship of the proletariat. In light of that new data, Marx said of the passage Caleb is quoting, the practical application of the principles will depend, as the manifesto itself states, elsewhere and at all times on historical conditions from the time being existing and, for that reason, no special stress is laid on the revolutionary measures proposed at the end of section 2. That passage would, in many respects, be very differently worded today. One thing especially proven by the commune, viz, that the working class cannot simply lay hold of the ready-made state machinery and wield it for its own purposes. In order for Caleb to come to the conclusion he did, he'd have to be deliberately ignoring the preface Marx and Engels wrote for later editions, or, you know, not understand it. Marx was a strict materialist. He didn't believe in being doctrinary. When new data came along, he believed in adapting it and incorporating it into his theories. Well, I'm not a historian, Lance. Can you tell me, has industry changed much since Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto? Is, is, is that you doing a bit? Like, what I'm asking, like... Are things different since the 1400s when it was written? For workers, I mean, like, do we all still ride our penny farthings to big textile plants making hats for gentlemen and bonnets for the ladies? Are we still driven mad by mercury fumes? Is Jack the Ripper still prowling the streets of London? Do people still believe the sun orbits the earth? Do we cower in fear of news from the east as the advancing Mongol hordes? Lance, what if Prester John and his armies? Surely he can save Christendom. Matt, stop talking. You got it. Now, I think we need to state the obvious. Communism is a moneyless, classless, stateless society. Oh, uh, a what society? A stateless society. So I, I didn't, I, sorry, what, I didn't catch that. What's the what society? A stateless society. That's, that's confusing. Before the state can be abolished, it must be seized by the working class. Once the workers seize power and control of the means of production, we've achieved socialism. The market still remains, however, and money is replaced with labor vouchers. Then, once it evolves into the higher phase, it removes labor vouchers and eliminates the state altogether. So, so in, in Marx's view, it's kind of like the Mortal Kombat Tower with communism being Shang Tsung. No, you mean Shao Kahn. What, so it's Mortal Kombat 2? Or a Mortal Kombat mythology, Sub-Zero for that matter. The important thing is that the metaphor is razor thin and open to multiple takedown responses. Except Marx never even suggested this was the natural evolution of things. That was Lenin. What's wildest about all of this is if you truly wanted to stay in Lenin, which you clearly want to do, Caleb, why not just do that? I mean, I know there's a lot of different ways of defining what is a leftist. Is it looking to evolve the system into something entirely new? Is it just wanting to smash stuff more voraciously? And if it is the last one, why are we following the teachings of Karl Marx when we should be following G Gallagher? But uh, here's, here's the... Here's the rub, though. Here's the, here's the thing. All of this is pointless. 
It wouldn't matter if Marx, Engels, Lenin, or Caleb, or me myself were 100% horny for the state. It wouldn't matter if every socialist theorist who ever lived believed with unerring conviction that the state was fundamentally necessary. That alone would not make such an argument correct. There was a time when all medical experts thought it was ridiculous to ask doctors to wash their hands before surgery, even when presented with evidence that it helped patients avoid infection. Were Caleb right about Marx? And I, I, I just can't stress enough that he isn't. He's cherry-picking quotations that support his arguments. So what? Why should that mean that everyone else must therefore go away? Like, if he stated intent of every BreadTube video was just to dispassionately describe Marx's ideas without adding any one of their own thoughts or opinions, that idea might hold some water. But that's not what I do, or what anyone I know on BreadTube does. Just so we're clear, uh, bread, bread, bread tubes, uh, a Reddit thread, it, it, it's, it's, it's just the subreddit on, on the website Reddit. It, it's not, it's not an organization. There's, there's not, there's not meetings. We don't, we don't have a council of bread tube meetings. There's, like, some of us are friends in this loosely connected, like, group that I guess has been branded with the same name. Case in point, putting destiny on the cover of the thumbnail implies you either don't understand the group you're attempting to debunk, or you're intentionally muddying the waters to push a narrative. It's not even controversial or starting drama to suggest that Destiny hates the online left and BreadTube as a whole even more than you do, Caleb, because he said it out loud multiple times, like all the time. He's very vocal about it. Marx didn't invent socialism or communism any more than Newton invented gravity. The concept that labor needs to be exploited to produce surplus value is a priori knowledge, which is fancy speak for it exists independent of human observation, much like mathematics or the slender man. Marx was not a prophet, and I think he'd resent the way Caleb is treating him like one. His analysis is not holy writ delivered onto mankind that we cannot improve or question. He was an economist, and he did a good job of explaining how capitalism works and why that's a problem. He did not coin the term socialism. He certainly didn't invent it. And even if you were have offered the definition Caleb claims, it's not necessarily a problem that other people follow other definitions. Unless... Unless you think you're part of the super special boy club, you look at Marx's theory as less of a tool to uplift the downtrodden and more of a confirmation of your own moral superiority for believing it. If you thought being a Marxist made you a good person, a better person, then surely the people out there being less Marxist, or whatever you think is less Marxist, must therefore be being bad people. They should go away. If power is to be centralized in the hands of the state, which I gather from this one sentence I read by Marx and nothing else he ever said, and the state is to be under command of the party, well then surely I must be the one qualified to lead that state. I must wield that power because only I will use it as ordained in scripture. Yep, you know what? Having looked over the evidence in my, in my books, it looks like, wow, okay, you're not going to believe this. this. Okay, but what's best for everyone, get this, is if I'm in charge of everything, if all production is centralized through the state, which people who agree with me get to control. And since I agree with me the most, I'm naturally the leader here. Trust me, guys, there's no way that could go wrong. Read the books. Well, I got you here. Any chance you could kill every sparrow in the country? I have a, I have a, a brunch. Uh, sorry, I have a hunch that'll improve our grain output. And what better way to test that on millions of people's livelihoods? And by the way, uh, disagreeing with me here is revisionism. And the punishment for revisionism is death by... Okay, bye. We could make an entire episode on China and how it's misunderstood by multiple points on the political spectrum. We're not, we're not doing that. We're just, we're about to put a bow on this thing. We don't need to get into that right now. Right, right. So, so here's the steamed hams version then. Uh, and it goes as follows. There is no question that China has lifted more people out of extreme poverty in the last several decades than any nation before it. It has achieved in that time what took America centuries of economic growth. It didn't do this by rejecting capitalism. It did this by streamlining it. It is a state-owned corporation that is controlled by the CCP. And while the CCP boasts of having 90 million members, at its most generous interpretation, that would mean 9% of the country is making decisions that affect the entire majority. 
While it's very difficult to completely know the inner operations of the Chinese Communist Party without getting the messaging clouded by American propaganda, independently collaborated sources put actual decision-making control into even smaller control than that. The voting members who stamp legislation are under 3,000 strong, and ultimately the final decision on policy and control of the military rests within the command of Xi Jinping. They also have private investment and corporations operating alongside the state-controlled ones. They do not get ownership or control of the factories or companies the party does. And the state has total control. They heavily censor all media in the country, including the entirety of the internet. Citizens receive social credit scores. They're involved in mass cultural genocides of the Uyghur Muslim minorities in the country, so they're an authoritarian state that for a large section of the population can be benevolent in its poverty alleviation. But that doesn't make any part of it communist. Back to Caleb. Looking at socialism through this lens, that there is one inviolate, perfect path towards mankind's glorious future, makes every other branch of socialism a form of heresy, something which must not be tolerated, lest people start getting dangerous ideas. Like, for example, that they don't need me, specifically, or people like me, to achieve salvation. And I know, I'm using a lot of religious terminology here, because that's kind of how Caleb is presenting his argument. He's not arguing why production should be centralized by the state, simply that Marx and Engels said so, and therefore, the rest of us must take it on faith. I'm sure if you asked him, he could present some argument as to why he believes this. I'm sure he has plenty of citations he can trot out. Well, before the October Revolution, Russia produced X number of commodities. After, they produced Y number of commodities. Plenty of statistics memorized, plenty of bad faith accusations and bad jacketing lined up against anyone who dares demand proof of his claims. The fact that he does not feel the need to present any of that evidence speaks volumes about what he thinks the purpose of Marxist theory is. It is not a tool for you to understand the world around you. It is, in fact, actually pointless for you to attempt to understand the world. Dangerous, even. That's not your place. Marx has already understood the world for you, and it's your job to follow the script he laid out, as interpreted by people like Caleb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, all right. Mm-hmm. Alright. This is very annoying. What does that mean? I knowing? Did you say I knowing? Why would I ever say that? Hello, and welcome to the Eyeball Zone. Or what's that? These are not the eyeballs you were expecting? <laughs> Foolish mortal. Lord Oculon can conjure all manner of eyes to suit his great many nefarious purposes. And today is such a day. Speaking of conjuring, and nefarious purposes, there's a rather large and significant problem regarding casual racism in the world of the fantasy genre. On her channel, Cheyenne Lin has posted a video essay where she addresses all the issues regarding racism in the fantasy genre and her solutions on how to combat it. As always, you can find the links in the description below, and you can also find a master list of all previous victims of Lord Oculon's conquest of dread. Do you have a small leftist project that you feel deserves more eyeballs? If so, send no more than one email to thoughtslimeeditor at gmail and make sure you include the word eyeball somewhere in the descriptor and fill out all other pertinent information such as your pronouns and perhaps you too shall luckily find yourselves trapped in the eyeball zone. Bye bye understand the difference between this individual and myself is simply to look at the name that he gave himself, Thought Slime, and the image in the background of his video. Mr. Thought Slime has this image of slime, green gross slime, pouring out of a sewer behind him the whole time he is speaking. I don't find that appealing. I don't enjoy looking at gross, you know, mucus-like looking slime, and I'm not particularly interested in hearing what someone says if they name themselves after something that I don't particularly like looking at. But you see, I'm from the working class. I grew up in a small town with people who worked in factories. Working people are trying to get rid international bankers and I want to start to transition but I'm really afraid that if I do I'll lose my job hmm Burger King 
I really doubt that Mr. Thought Slime has ever worked in fast food. However, I did work in fast food when I was a college student. One summer, during my college years, I actually worked at a sandwich shop that was fast food in the Cleveland area near the college I went to. And I'll tell you, that was a miserable job. I mean, they were constantly driving you faster to make those sandwiches and churn out those orders. Uh, it was very, very difficult to keep up the pace. And I'll tell you one thing, Burger King. And part of the reason there was a tolerance for them was because prior to the modern gay rights movement, a lot of gay men's first sexual experience was with a pedophile. And mm. so there were a lot of gay men who, who felt like, oh, wow, I thought I was the only gay person in the world. But then luckily my, my coach molested me. And so, and, and there were a lot of gay men that had some very strange feelings about pedophiles, even if they weren't pedophiles themselves, because of that, that reality. And that's deeply sad and tragic. And you hope that you can gain some credibility by going, oh, it's not real socialism. I, I believe in happy, happy, fun socialism, not the, not the Soviet kind. Don't worry, guys. I'm not a bad socialist. I'm a good one, gee golly. Our view is, and it's not about people, we're not against a trans person. It's the ideology that's being pushed on people that says, you are what you think you are. Now, this is total idealism. Idealism in the philosoph philosophical sense of the opposite of materialism. It says, I think, therefore I am. Whatever I think, that's reality. Now, as a Marxist, we have to uphold the idea that or the reality, that, that material reality is... It's not a communist. He may be a liar, a pig, an idiot, a communist, but he is not a porn star. Oh no, I was an ML. I was a tanky. Because I'd been lied to. Now, why do I not walk around the streets naked? That may be, I, I mean, I, I, I don't have any desire to do so, but if I did, I couldn't do it. If my instinct told me I could run around naked, I couldn't do it or I would go to jail. That would be indecent exposure. Why? Because civilization restrains my instinct. Ruins of US society. Now it is time for white people to change how they see themselves. We, we need to understand that the satanic cabal of bankers that has committed so many crimes around the world is also our enemy. The people of Iran, Venezuela, Russia, China, Palestine, Yemen, and anywhere else who are standing up and trying to break free from their system of global usury are our friends. It lies around the corner, never knowing who's going to kill you. Are you the next one to be murked? You never know if it's a friend or a foe. If you want to see the biggest names in BreadTube, Left Twitch, and Butter Thing, and I don't know the fucking names anymore, come see Left Among Us. If you want us to advertise your channel or work, please go to wearesurfs.com and email us a 20 to 30 second ad, and we'll take it on to the end of one of our videos to help promote your leftist channel or progressive something. Whatever you do. To our god, I'm Rast, Xander Corvus, and Schlatsky, we shall commit blood sacrifices in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, our lives are yours to command. To our lords, Jeffrey Lamb, Trevor R., Stephen, Hans Josephin, Poppy Nelson, Ryan Lubin, Jimothy K. Meeblebeeps Jr., we bow meekly for your pleasure. To our knights of the round table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Byth, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Political Puppy, Jimmy Big Nuts, Andreas Chitoro, Good Poon Hates Cops, That's Solid Poon Then, Dr. Zayas, Yopi, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Jack Darko, Thomas Barrington, Jay Fraser Cartwright, Goofalankius, Melissa Murphy, Nicholas Marks, Alexander Thaler, Ali Rada Jaffer, Alex Gauvin, Radical Maniac, we salute you.